Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today I got a great video for you. We're going to be building a combination wood and metal coffee table, about 40 inches square, about 16 inches tall. You might call it a little commercial, industrial, hardcore, heavy duty, I don't know, any or all of the above. Let's just hope I don't need a crane to get it out of the shop when I'm done. Let's get started on today's video. Well, I don't know about a crane, <laughs> but it is going to be heavy when it's all over with. All right, I'm starting out here with some three inch square tube. This is 120 wall, um, eighth of an inch thick. And these are the legs they are going to be, um, it is going to be 16 inches tall, but I'm holding this about an inch and three quarters shorter than that because I do have the wood top and that's how thick that's going to be. And that is going on the top. So our finished height is 16. Um, this is some two and a half inch square tube, 120 wall as well. I got all the pieces all cut out and uh, ready for assembly there. And, uh, you know, it's funny when you, when you do a lot of cutting like that, you get a lot of chips and they all stack up in the end of the tube right there. At, uh, I like to get everything cleaned out. A good way to go before you get started doing anything like this is to soften up the edges all around, deburr everything. You know, this is, uh, you don't want to definitely, these are like razor blades on the ends once they come off the saw and you just def definitely don't want to be cutting your fingers on them or anything. So it's nice to have a nice uh, smooth end by deburring it. And the, uh, the immerser uh, flap disc has uh, no problem going around taking care of that. You know, this is uh, the next step was to uh, put some end caps on the top here. And uh, so I'm over at my plasma table and I just cut some square end caps out. You know, I made a little bit of a mistake here in the uh, programming right here. For some reason, I programmed it to qu cut twice around there. <laughs> no problems, though. Uh, worked out pretty good. Everything, everything cut out really nice. At least it made them easier to take right out of the table. It just lifted them right out of there. And when they come off, one side of them's got a little bit of dross on the end right there. And there's several ways to remove that. I'm just using a little cold chisel here. There's not a lot of it. And I'm just knocking off the edges. Um, I'm just trying to get it to where it's a little bit smoother and easier to work with. And once I got that done, um, I'm over here at the Burr King. And I'm just going to round the edges all the way around the square tube. Uh, they cut, it comes with uh, slightly rounded edges. And so that's the goal here. I'm just trying to make these fit as close as I can uh, to the square tubes, as you can see, just like that. And then I'm just going to go along here and tack uh, all four corners on both sides. I'm sealing both sides of these legs off, top and bottom. And once everything is all tacked into place right here, uh, on both sides, then it's just a matter of, uh, of welding these all the way around. And I am going to be uh, grinding these clean. Uh, you can see that uh, you know, I try to get I try to get as comfortable as I possibly can when I'm when I'm welding. That it, uh, it makes it uh, uh, much easier. But I got my fume extractor, my Sentry uh, fume extractor right there, and it's just sucking away the fumes. Uh, that worked out good in this situation right here. I'm not getting too critical on these welds. They are going to get grounded, but I definitely wanted to fill them all the way around. And uh, something like that is what that, that looks like. Nice and uh, filled up that area. So when I grind them down, uh, it, uh, it's nice and smooth. And you can see right there. That's all it's going to take. Just go around and knock down those edges and uh, it uh, round them up a little bit. And it looks just like a, uh, a solid piece of tube. And that's the, that's the look I was looking for right there. All right, so I got all that done. And uh, you can see I'm over my fab table here now. And I've got the pins in the table. And I've got a piece of inch and a half square tube. And that's what I'm going to use for a little backer plate to keep everything nice and square. I dropped a couple of legs in and one of the center rails right there and uh, some fab block squares and some armor clamps to clamp everything in and be sure everything is nice and square and plumb before I get started uh, tacking everything together. I've been waiting a long time for this. This has been a good project that I've been wanting to do and I'm just trying to take my time and think things through and, and do everything um, you know, that's right here. 
you know, this is a design that uh, that I went back and forth with uh, with the owners, uh, trying to figure out what it is, and ultimately, I think they uh, we just decided on on something. Uh, there was there was a picture that we used off the internet, and uh, this is similar, not quite, but similar to. Um, I've added a few more features to this, that, uh, but nevertheless, uh, this is what we came up with, and and I kind of like it. I'm just working my way around the table right here and uh, be sure everything is nice and square and just tacking everything in. Doing the same process, you know, at this point it's critical. I just want to be sure that the, everything stays nice and plumb and nice and nice and square. So far so good. And, uh, we're right around to the last one here. And it just dropped right in there. So that's a good sign. All right, so... There it is. It's all tacked in right there. And me being as anxious as I am to keep moving on in this project, um, I decided, okay, I'm going to start welding these uh, joints all the way out. You know, I'm just thinking ahead and, and uh, I'm just anxious to get moving along here. But you're going to see here in a little bit that this proved to be a mistake. I should have waited uh, before I started welding everything out. You know, these welds are going to be seen, so I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm trying to uh, give a good look here. Um, uh, that was another thing I was thinking about. You know, I, I just wanted them to look real good. So I'm doing a little manipulation right there. You can see to try to, try to create a, a, a decent looking weld. Uh, uh, I didn't want to have anything too ugly. So I'm um, just trying to, trying to lay those beads in there really nice. And uh, that's kind of the way they ended up, and I'm pretty pleased with that. That'll, that'll that'll work all right so moving right along right here and just getting all of that done and then here lies the problem i went to put the uh, bottom rail in and uh everything had kind of closed in on me a little bit and that made it a little bit tougher for me to to get these bottom rail pieces in i had to get them in there bang them around with a hammer uh I used a dead blow here, so I didn't suffer any damage to the tubing, but man, I had to work at it. And that's all a learning process right there. You know, I, I knew I'd made the mistake as soon as I did it, and I was just hoping that it didn't close in too much, and I was able to get it in there. And it uh, took a little bit of persuasion, but uh, it all got in there. It all worked out pretty good. And then I'm just tacking everything in right here, and uh, just for those guys who are wondering, I am working off of the HDP Pro Pulse 220 MTS here. I'm in the MIG mode. I'm using 30 thousandths wire. And my go to uh, is about 200, between 240 and 250 inches a minute. That's what I like to run. And I'm running uh, some 90 10, 90% 90 argon, 10% CO2, and about 30, uh, about 20, 20, 25 CFH. You can see me banging them in. At, I ultimately got them all in. And uh, I'm just trying to get some nice little welds in there now. You know, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Lots of you guys, a lot of welders out there use different types of methods. Uh, you know, I like to use a, a little uh, small cursive E or small circles. Uh, you know, that seems to work the best for me. There's lots of different ways to do it. They all seem to get the same uh, results. It's just it's what you're used to, I guess. I'm trying to show you all kinds of different angles here. here we're gonna um, we're going downhill, going underneath here, horizontal and flat position. And there it is. That part of the table is almost complete. This is just the last of the welding here on the very bottom, all the way around. And I got to say, it's starting to take shape, and uh, it's kind of fun seeing this thing come together. But I am getting a little concerned about the weight of it. It is kind of heavy. But, oh, well, you know what? It's all part of it. All right, so now I got that all out of the way. Now it's time to get some angle iron in. And the angle iron is what's going to be holding the wood in on both the top and the bottom. Now, this angle iron is three-quarter inch, eighth inch. And I'm going to be using this for the bottom uh, because the bottom is going to be recessed in and it's going to be flush to the bottom rail. And I couldn't, I choose this, uh, I choose a three quarter inch because I did not want uh, the angle iron to come past the bottom of the frame right there. So 
This is why I use this, and then I'm just stitching this in here about every six or eight inches apart, and each weld is about a about an inch long. And you see me uh, propping it up on some cardboard there. You're probably wondering why that is. Well, there's going to be a lot of sliding this thing around the table, and I did not want to scratch the metal any more than I had to, so I just uh, propped it up on some on some cardboard there as I'm sliding it around, and that worked out pretty good, and uh, you know, no scratches. So again, this is just uh, the angle iron in the bottom. This is what the uh, wood is going to be resting on. This wood is an inch and three quarters thick. So, um, you know, it's uh, pretty thick stuff. So it's the same process all the way around. Just using my armor clamps to hold everything in place and then just getting everything, uh, you know, welded in here. That takes care of the bottom. Now we're on to the top. Now the top is a little bit different. This is an uh, inch and a half angle iron. This is also one eighth of an inch thick. I can use this thickness because the wood is actually going to be on top of the table and it's going to be cantilevering over the top. So I just chose to go with this inch and a half. It gives me a little bit more uh, meat to anchor the top to. And that's not going to be a problem with the angle hanging off the bottom there. So there's no problems there. And the same method here all the way around, uh, just uh, six to eight inches apart. And, you know, about an inch long is all I really need. And I'm not doing any welding on the very top uh, because I want everything to sit flush. I thought about it, uh, but, you know, I thought maybe by just welding on the bottom right here that it would draw that angle iron in a little bit. It, it didn't. It stayed right where it is. So I liked it not to uh, put any welds on the top part there. You know, trying to keep everything looking as good as I possibly can here. Keep in mind, I'm not going to grind, be grinding any of these welds. And even though they are at the bottom, I still was conscious about trying to do the best job I can. Because who knows, somewhere down the line, somebody might have this table and flip it upside down and, and want to take a look at some of those welds. I don't, I don't know, but I just kept everything as clean as I possibly could. All right, well, there it is. Finally, that all is done, and that turned out pretty good. I'm going to set this aside right now. We are going to blacken this a little bit later, but now it's off to the wood. Now, I don't do a lot of woodworking, but this is um, um, alder, and it is what they call eight-quarter. This is what they told me at the uh, lumber supply store, yeah, eight-quarter. I'm not certain how that works. I know you wood guys out there have a solution for that. But I uh, was a little selective on uh, slicing this up. I definitely wanted some knots to be seen here. So I was, uh, you know, trying to get all the areas and, and mark and measure and get everything I possibly could out of the lengths of, uh, of wood that I have here and get, get as many knots as I can to give it that uh, rustic look. That's what I was looking for anyway. All right, so this wood comes from the mill with one smooth side and one rough side from the... Uh, from the sawmill originally there you can see that rough side is on the outside there and a more smoother side on the other side and that's what i was using to help do some of the cutting there you can see no i gotta get that side let me mark it this way and and get that all cut off right there and you can see there's not much waste now here's something here i'm using my table saw table now this is something that i haven't used in a long time this is one of my one of my biggest videos here is uh, this table saw table. I, I made this several years ago, and this is before I had the stuff I have in my shop now, and I selected this area on my workbench to mount this to, and you can see now it's uh, kind of in the way. I'm going to have to probably find a different location to mount this to, but nevertheless, it works out pretty good. It gives me a nice long flat surface to work with, and uh, along with the stop that I made right there, uh, being able to keep... Uh, Keep everything uh, nice and straight coming off the saw. And I got a nice little outfeed uh, with uh, my workbench there. You can see that uh, my welding table is in the way. <laughs> a little bit difficult to get in there and work. But uh, anyways, I was able to, uh, to get around it. I've got a brand new blade in here from Mercer. And uh, this thing here uh, cuts like butter. You can see it's cutting right through there. No issues at all. This is the rough side coming off the mill. You can see that uh, I'm utilizing everything I can right there. And then uh, just getting everything cut. I'm just trying to show you guys a couple of different angles. All right, so with everything all cut, uh, it's time to kind of smooth off the edges here a little bit. 
I'm just using my uh, my palm sander right here, and I am going through just a couple of grits. I'm starting with uh, about 120, and then I'm finishing with 220. Now, um, in my previous videos, I, I got a little slack from a few of you guys out there. I had uh, gone through uh, several grits, starting at 120, going up to about 800, and uh, you guys quickly let me know that that really wasn't necessary to do that, that it wasn't really necessary to go much past 220. And so that's what I'm doing here. And, you know, I appreciate all the input. You know, hey, I live and learn every day. I, I don't work with wood all the time. But, uh, you know, thanks to all you guys and your comments out there. You know, everybody learns every day. And uh, and this, this, this turned out to be just right. You know, 220 was really all you really need. And I'd gone through there and softened up all the edges and cleaned it up. And everything is nice and smooth. And, uh, you know, got it all done. And it worked out really good there. All right, so I'm getting ready to do the staining here uh, on this particular project, and uh, I, I just couldn't decide on the stain color. I started with a couple of different ones, and I wasn't really happy with those. Got a couple more, wasn't really happy. I ended up getting all of these different stain colors right here, and I've decided on this one right here. This is a uh, Minwax product, and the color is dark walnut. Uh, shows up pretty good with this type of wood. It's got a nice, it's got a nice color to it, nice dark, uh, soft color to it. Uh, I think it's going to go good with our black and metal frame. So let's get these things all stained and get this thing put together. All right, so I just transferred it over to a small little plastic container right there, and I am going to be applying this with an applicator. But before I do that, I'm going to use this little tack cloth right here to wipe off all the dust from the sanding. Be sure everything is nice and dust and lint free. Uh, these things are pretty cool. I heard about that on the internet again and I uh, picked this up at my local big box store and that actually worked out pretty good. It just, uh, it's a little tacky and it just takes all that uh, sawdust off before you get started. Now I gotta say, I'm a little surprised at how when I, this is the first board that I stained and I'm really pleased with the way this turned out. I really like the color in this and, it, and this wood really accepted that stain uh, really nice. And I just uh, put a quick little coat on that and then I just wiped it all off. You know, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it's the wood or the applicator or the stain or what, but, uh, you know, some woods just don't accept the stain as smoothly as this one did anyway. But uh, you can just see it. Uh, I'm really pleased with the color. And some of the grain here on, on some of these boards really stand out now once you uh, get some stain on it. You know, you can't really see that on that white wood prior to, but, man, some of those look really nice. I just repeated the process right here, and uh, actually the staining went fairly quick, and as soon as I got the stain on, I uh, wiped it off immediately because I uh, was pleased with the color. I didn't want it to be getting any darker than it than it really is, and this is the last board. Now, this is the method, you know, that I'm using. Now, you guys out there might, might say, hey, you know, I'm supposed to stain that way, or you don't do it that way. That That's fine, you know. Hey, I, it, this worked out pretty good for me. There's probably a different or a better way of doing it, but... Uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, I'm pretty, I'm pleased with the way this turned out. You know, I tried a couple of different things. I decided that I was going to use boiled linseed oil. You know, I thought about tongue oil and, uh, that I didn't have any tongue oil. Uh, I had some from a long time ago and it was, uh, it was old and, uh, the container was cracked. This tongue oil was expensive. So this boiled linseed oil here worked out really good. You know, I tried a little polyurethane. I wasn't happy with any of that. I wanted this oil finish uh, look. And so the spoiled linseed oil was a good sealer. Gave me that good lustry look. And, and that's what I was looking for. And just, a, you know, it's heavy coats all the way around. And it just sucked right into the wood right there. And I think it's going to provide for a, a good seal. This is going to be a coffee table. And uh, I just wanted to uh, be sure everything gets sealed up real nice. And there it is right there. Um, I'm pleased with the way that all turned out. Looks really good. All right, before we assemble it, this is what I needed to do. Now, this is a product from Sculpt Nouveau. I got this on the internet, metal blackening. Uh, I thought this is the route I wanted to go. I read the instructions, and I got to tell you, this was a little bit of work. Now, I don't know if this stuff, if this is too big for trying to, trying to blacken, you know, too big a piece of metal to try to, to try to blacken. Uh, but man, I'm telling you what, 
This was a lot of work. I, I spent probably two hours as fast as I could go to try to make this thing look as good as I possibly can, and it was so much work. But I ultimately got it there. This is the look I was looking for. It blackened it up really nice, um, but it wasn't quite as easy as uh, they made it sound. But nevertheless, it, it's a good looking finish. Uh, that was absolutely perfect. That's just what I was looking for. All right, so it's assembly time here, and I uh, take tif take uh, careful consideration on the knots and where they're placed, and uh, this is how they're going to go together. So the top is on the bottom of the of the mat right there, and then I'm just going to lay this table down, and then we are going to square it up and start putting things together. And before I do that, I thought it'd be a good idea to get some big bar clamps on here to squeeze the ends in so nothing's coming apart when I uh, go to assemble it. I got everything nice and squared up on the table itself. And I'm just attaching it here with some uh, flathead screws. These are number 12 screws and so I'm drilling the appropriate size holes for those. I believe it's just a couple of uh, fractional sizes less than a quarter. And I'm putting two screws on each end of the board about an inch and a half or so away you know, i got a brand new drill bit right here and it is cutting right through here no problem uh, i didn't want to use any oil or anything like that it didn't seem like i needed to everything seemed to be cutting pretty good um, i just figured that when i'm done with this i'll just uh, get a new drill bit if i need to stayed sharp the whole way everything worked out pretty good Yep, you can see those screws. That's what we're using right there. I believe they're an inch and a quarter long, and uh, they're going to go right in, and, and they're pulling everything up nice and tight right there. I just repeated the process all the way around, and uh, I just drilled some holes in there and got everything anchored in. So far, so good. It's working just the way I hope it would. However, right in the very middle right here, I could just see that there might have been where they didn't quite come together. So I quickly fabricated this 3 16 by 2 inch flat bar stock. And I'm going to attach it to the middle right here. You can see that uh, I'm just uh, kind of giving it a couple little shots with weld on either side. And then cooling it down right away with some water. I didn't want it to be burning the wood. They're not the prettiest looking welds. It doesn't matter. Uh, they're not going anywhere and then just ran some screws in there and that did the trick it pulled everything up really nice a little finishing touch right here i couldn't stand the shininess of the screw heads and so i just grabbed a little bit of uh flat black paint and just uh, with a q-tip and i went around and just uh, covered all the screw heads and that uh that softened that up a little bit made it look uh, much better and this is for the bottom. I'm just pre-drilling all the holes right here for the wood. Um, this is a little bit more trickier once I get uh, to install this. I've actually got to stand the table up on end and uh, get them in that way. Final vacuum all the chips off the bottom before we stand this thing up. And, and there's the first look at the bottom of the table. And I'm, I'm happy with the layout there. And I'm happy with they, the way that looks. And then just dropping the, the bottom piece in right here and uh, doing a little bit of pre-drilling and then and then screwing them in right there they just stacked right in and went all the way to the very top and just like that you know this is done it was just, this has been a really great project i hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as i enjoyed building it it was a lot of fun in case you guys wanted to know what the final weight was of the table i did drop it on the scale at the very end of the project and there it is at uh, 171.4 pounds. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Check out my website at jimbosgarage.com for your torch lead holders and your latest swag and t-shirts. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.